Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to this press conference for some of the films that are participating at this 2023 edition of uh, Jomami Mumbai Film Festival. I'm Paolo Bertolin, I'm a programmer of the Venice International Film Festival, and I'm here as one of the consultants to the international program of uh, the festival. I'm very glad to host this session because we have four distinguished filmmakers whose films are premiering here at MAMI. Uh, premiered yesterday or are premiering today and tomorrow, so the audiences of the festival will have the chance to discover uh, these works from up-and-coming filmmakers who are um, presenting films that are, I feel, uh, very remarkable on the one hand for their formal approaches, but on the other also for very different ways of working on the political, uh, on the political as a wider term of the uh, landscape of the past and the present of their societies, but also on the political as something that is very intricately connected with a personal, individual experience between one culture and another, between one uh, way of framing uh, the identity within a society and within its own history. So they're all very, very remarkable films, so I would like to thank them for being here with us. Uh, in Mumbai for the festival, and I would like to obviously introduce them, starting from my extreme left. Uh, we are here with uh, Vera Gito, who is presenting the film The Battle uh, from Brazil. Then we have Asmael, e Pardon. Asmael Mudir from Morocco and France, who's presenting her film The Mother of All Lies. Uh, we have then uh, two filmmakers from here, from Asia, Miko Revereza. Well, actually, no. Yes, true. Miko is from originally from Asia, but also from the US and Mexico. And then Patipan Buntarig is coming from uh, Thailand, and he's presenting Solids by the Seashore right after the presentation in the world premiere in Busan. Um, of course, the press conference is open to questions from the floor. If there are any questions from the journalists in the room, you're more than welcome to raise your hand and uh, open up the conversation to your questions and comments. So just raise your hand in case and we will be giving you the opportunity to uh, join the conversation. But as a way to start, I would like to make it very, very simple. And I would like to start uh, with Vera and then moving on with Masamae, Nico and Patiparn. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourselves and the films you're presenting here? Can you give us a brief introduction to your works, please? Oh, uh, hello, I'm Vera. I, this is my second feature film. It's uh, based on a real story that happened during the dictatorship in Brazil in 1968. I attended film school in Sao Paulo and uh, I've been working for TV series and, and as a writer for cinema too. This is my first time in Asia, first time in India. I'm very happy to be here. And I think the film is about uh, students resisting against oppression. And I think it's a very, unfortunately, it's a very universal theme, a very universal story, more than I could imagine. And I think this is it. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Asmae, please. Hello, uh, my name is Asmae Moudir from Morocco. I live in France, so I studied cinema in between Morocco and France. Um, the Mother of All Lies is my first theatrical film that I present here. It's about me and my family. It's a very intimate story, but it's also a very pot political story. Um, it's my first time here in India. I like this country. Um, and I think that it's very important to, to start telling our own stories before going and uh, discovering stories of other people or maybe making a, mm, a fiction because this, this, this film is a hybrid documentary. Thank you. I would be happy to answer other questions. Hello, I'm Miko. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Also my first time in India, in Mumbai, um, but it feels a little similar to home in Manila. It has this a similar vibe and uh, the air also tends to embrace you. Um, so I feel nice here. 
And my film is titled Nowhere Near. It's a film that I spent something like seven years on. And it's my third feature film, but it also feels like the first because I started filming it um, before the other ones. It's a personal documentary and essay film um, about the time that I was in the, the United States um, without any legal immigration papers for most of my life. And um, through the investigation of, of why and asking family, it kind of leads to my decision to leave and exile from the United States, um, returning to the, to the Philippines and tracking down the roots of that migration linked to the colonization and occupation of the Philippines by the U.S. And onward after that. Um, thank you so much for having me and looking forward to speaking more. Okay. Uh, okay. My, my name is Patipa Mutrik. I'm the director of Solis by the Seashore. Uh, for me, I'm really excited to be here because uh, my film is about, uh, it's about the religions and it's really sensitive issue in my country too because it talk about the minority uh, Muslim people in my country because like Thailand, everyone know that uh, the Buddhist country but I talk about the minority and uh, talking about the issue of the small people with small voice. Yeah, so it's really challenging for me to, to making this documentary, uh, uh, this film, and also uh, I'm excited to screen in my country and also in here because uh, it's my first time to be in India, in Mumbai. And uh, for me, it's like uh, India, as I know, is like the, the country with are very diverse in belief, in thinking, in religious and language and everything. <laughs> so I really excited to to meet the audience here and hear what what they think about my film too. Because uh, this this topic is sensitive in my country, but I'm not sure like what what they're thinking or maybe they will have like many thinking too. So yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, if there, are, if there aren't already questions from the floor, I would like to ask all the four filmmakers, because well, one question to all four filmmakers, because uh, one thing that clearly emerged even from these very short introductions to their works is that the subjects they're tackling are somehow relevant. I mean, I know this is a banal thing to say, but relevant within the framework of the society and history of their countries or their own experience within this kind of uh, identitary framework. So I would like to ask again each and every one of you, uh, how is it that you decided on the one hand to tackle certain specific subject and why was it cinema the way that uh, you thought was ideal? to discuss this kind of uh, topics. Uh, this time I will start with Patipan. Uh, uh, for, uh, if I start with my inspiration, uh, did this film it start from, uh, the inspiration is from my, when, when I made the documentary film like around 12 years ago about the seawall that is like the structure to prevent the erosion. Uh, and it's like the corruption project from the government or something like that that spent a lot of money and it's, it's, it's made to prevent the, the beach from erosion but it actually it's caused more erosion and that time uh, I interviewed one of the uh, the major of the city who fight against this project and after I finished and editing the, that film uh, that major got shot dead so that's situation really shaking me a lot like okay I, I want to do something about this so after that I I uh, blend my personal story to the the city the area and pick the, w the sorry if I interrupt you which, which area is it can you tell oh, us okay. more specifically about the context there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah thank you like uh, in Thailand uh, the, the, the whole city is major uh, majority is Buddhist but in the southern of Thailand, the majority is Muslim. 
so so my the the part that I I made is Songkhla. It's like the city between like the deep south that is like very very uh, Muslim uh, province. Yeah, so it, that is the, the that the, that part. So I like use my personal story and twist it into that uh, the life of people there that affect from that environmental project. Yeah, to to become that film. Uh, you were saying that you injected in this kind of uh, uh, realistic documentary-like kind of uh, context an element that was personal, your story. How did you weave this into this uh, kind of uh, societal backdrop? Uh, uh, from from that, uh, I mean, it's interesting in like small people who fight with the, some uh, the bigger structure that is really hard to fight with. That that is also like the the concept of the film. So it's not just only uh, people who fight with the, the big project like that and yeah, lose life fighting for it like that. But it's also about many many things in human life, like equality, gender equality, or uh, stereotyping things and many things that is the structure patriarchy system like that so that that is what i try to make like in our life we everyone have to fight for something bigger and and how that uh, we can fight or we can negotiate in in that that issue miko yeah I, 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 oh, sorry, oh sorry sorry i just add a little bit like yes, yes, please, please. Uh, that that's why the film i think is film this film is good because uh, it's a sensitive issue when we talk about equality when it's linked to the belief and yeah film can make it more gentle subtle and maybe raise some dialogue uh, yeah thank you so much uh, miko please yes um well i think first uh, i wanted to make images when i was a child and then um, at some point i wanted to make photographic images but then at another point, I, I learned that I wanted to make um, moving images. And then um, I got exposed to Philippine cinema, and then I wanted to make also make uh, Philippine moving images. But I was living in the United States for a long time and, and exiled from, from the, the Philippines, my homeland. Um, so then that became uh, an interesting conflict of how to make uh, Filipino moving images or be part of that community. And I, with my first short films, it was kind of, uh, I mean, maybe all of my films, it's, it's thinking about um, what, what, is, what is Filipino. And um, in my attempt at approximating that, um, also realizing sort of my ignorance towards it, um, but anyway, I use film as a process of, of uh, thinking, as a process of uh, self-transformation and uh, investigation into uh, how things have come about in my, my own life and, and um, difficult things to, to think about within, within um, my social relationships and my family relationships. Um, I think about film sometimes it's, it's not really like as an end goal but an ongoing process like the like a math equation isn't always like about the like the the final um, answer but then kind of the proof of of um, of process um, so maybe all of these films they're they're not separate projects but an, an ongoing project um, but i feel this one nowhere near um, might be the culmination of 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 many different projects perhaps because I, i'm also tiring of, of of that subject and would like to explore different things but in this film in particularly in particular i feel like i've kind of exhausted it um, and and um and and throughout many years had tried to find my voice and and in, in this one um feel like i've i've uh, there was no stone that was unturned 
Uh, thank you so much, Miko. You just uh, uh, stressed uh, the concept or the notion of process, which is very interesting because earlier you told us that this film, which now you described as the culmination of your work, is something that you started working years ago and probably could have, should have been the first film, but then it is your third one. Uh, how would you recognize this transformation in the film itself from the moment it started and now the moment it screens, both for the film itself and for yourself, because your process seems to be involving so much yourself as a person and as a filmmaker. Yeah, I, with this film and as with um, my other films in the past, they might as well be the same film. Um, and throughout the, the evolution of making several films, um, I feel like it's an evolution of, of um, playing with f different forms of, of telling the same story. Um, I mean, they're all different, um, but more or less they, they, they tackle the same themes and, and, a, and a personal history, my own personal history. Um, and with this film, I, I, I just... I just felt that um, um, I, I don't I don't know how to say it, but I, I, I with the other films, I, I think maybe there was something lacking where where I knew what it needed and it needed my voice, and there was I'd always kind of end up falling short of that and finding some s formal excuse not to use the voice or fully write out. And fully like express um, everything that that I wanted to say, um, but in this film, it it took some years of writing and f editing um, and commitment and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of pain to to get through this. And it wasn't like a, there was no shortcuts. As with, with my other films, my, my first feature film, No Data Plan, I filmed it in three days and edited it in a month. And I was like, oh, great, great. That's <laughs> we can just uh, make films that way. But then, but no, this one took seven years and there was a lot of uh, pain and tears that, that, were, that was put into this. Um, but I, I feel like maybe it was this, this long, long-term project um, it helped me understand so much about about film, about um, about my family. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Asmae. Please. Uh, yeah, for me, um, being a filmmaker, it's it's not a decision that we, that I took, but it was a necessity. It's a necess It was necessary to tell my story. I cannot write a book because I I'm not a writer, so. I choose to write with the light, with camera, and it was the the good decision that I took to just follow my family during these ten years. I had no idea when I will finish this film and how I will finish it. Uh, I was like the producer, director, editor, but I didn't choose to do all of the stuff. But just I'd have no choice, and then. Um, my film is about memory, restoring memory. It was such hard work to start with nothing, to tell the story um, of the past, the past of my family, of my street, without no footage, without nothing. So I should to create my own archive during nine or seven years and then get all this footage and use them in the last two years in what I created, what I call laboratory. So I think um, uh, my film starts only in the house, uh, telling this this small lie that we can tell a child when when we when we are child. But when we grew up, we realized that uh, our parents told us some little lies. But in my film, I I dis I was discovering little by little that this small lies was only a symptom of other bigger ones. And these lies grow bigger, destroy the walls, and they escape in the, ha in, the, in the street when I discovered that a big riot took place just in front of my, my house. And that's why memory wa was 
really important to to how we can restore the memory when we have nothing. In my case was I'm talking about Morocco, so I was when I decided to make this story about my family and the streets and what happened in a 1981 was like not a way to looking for guilty people or denouncing anyone, but I was just trying to understand how we invent stories when we don't have any concrete or visual proofs of what has happened. And I, I think that a filmmaking is a great way to create this interaction with the family and to show this mechanism of lies that grew up in the house and maybe in the country. I'm not sure if I'm answering <laughs> the question, but yeah, so that's it. I, I just wanted to mention one thing. I don't know if the people in the room have seen the film, but uh, your work, uh, which could be described as a hybrid documentary, is something that is also trying to find a device, to, mm. as you just said, to, to tell something and to uh, represent something for which there are no images. And uh, you have worked with your family to reconstruct this with, uh, I don't know if, it, if I can call them puppets, like yeah. little statuette miniatures. Uh, how, how did that come to your mind as a way to re-enact that past? Yeah, I think that everyone in this life have a story to tell and everyone can can tell, tell tell us something, real fact, but the way how we can tell this fact, this is the most important. So for me, it was the case because I was looking for years how I can tell this trauma without, I mean, without using tears and everything that we can use because it's so hard to tell this story. So how the how I can tell it in 10 years without losing anyone. So the, the, the most important, the most, I mean, um, um, th things that works for me, it, it has like um, to, to create things in my atelier, in my laboratory and to, to use them when I want. For example, figuring a miniature are here and representing each one of my characters and uh, if someone of us it's not here one day, the film will finish. This was the idea. My father helped me because it was his idea also because I couldn't film in the in some in some decor in some area like symmetry. It's forbidden. We have no permission. So I should to create these spaces and to bring us in the atelier to us because I have also my characters are old, so I cannot move with them in the whole Casablanca. So I think um, I had a lot of obstacles and I should to face them and to create things to just make this film. The, re the reason was like just making this film about the past and then I can now pass the, to the future. I'm free now because we talked. Um, it was it was not not easy to just talk about our own past. That's why I should to create these walls and bring all my family to these walls and say, okay, now the walls have no ears, we can talk and we will destroy everything after that. And then we, it was like a, a kind of therapy. I don't like to tell, to, to talk about therapy, but it was, it was a therapy, yeah. And uh, finally, Vera, can you tell us uh, about your approach? Well, it's it's an amazing question. I I I think I've never answered this question. Why I choose cinema to express myself, and um, I think I'm listening to the other filmmakers and around the world, s meeting filmmakers, and I think everybody has a story to tell. And we see so much pain in the world now. At the, exactly now, we have wars going on and a lot of horrible things going on and some people i don't know why exactly are able to write or to make films or to make music about that and it's a way to express the collective so i i feel very with just a huge privilege of knowing how to write and knowing how to make films to tell stories about my culture, about myself. I think cinema 
is probably the most uh, the most popular way to tell a story because everybody sees uh, uh, soap operas and cinema. I mean, audiovisual communication, and maybe since I was a child, it was a great way to 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 see stories, and I started developing stories and. I think above cinema, just music. Music is the most universal way to express yourself. Unfortunately, I'm not talented enough to make music, so I'm making cinema. And uh, and this story is about the dictatorship. I didn't experience that. I, I was born in 1982, so we were beginning our democracy in 1982. I grew up in a democracy and I could vote for president when I was 16 for the first time, which for my parents was a great achievement because they couldn't vote for president. And all of a sudden, five years ago, six years ago, we had this horrible person as a president in Brazil trying to, to, to make a coup, trying to end to democracy. and. Mm, a lot of people in Brazil were supporting him. And my story is about a dictatorship, a police massacre against a university. My university, I studied there. I attended film school in this university. And uh, it was about the past, but it started being about the present, which is crazy. And, and I, when I heard stories about the places I've been visiting, it's it's the same story, like people resisting against oppression. And so I don't know, I, I don't think I choose cinema. I think it was a way I find to express myself. And I'm so glad of being able to do that. I'm so glad to being able to, I think, sing films, having a, a week, sing films in, in, in the way the world is now. It's it's a huge privilege. We we must be very, all must be very glad to be here. And then uh, I mean, uh, it, it, it's it's very, I, I would say even touching the fact that uh, you decided to go back and tell a story that dates back before your birth to bring that back into the discussion, political discussion uh, within Brazil at a time when a president is kind of denying the horrors of those times. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, what was your approach in going back to those events? Did you do some research and how did you decide to stage that into uh, your film? Yeah, a lot of research. The point is this story is about one day, a battle between the left-oriented students resisting against a dictatorship and on across the street, there was this private university and inside the university there was a kind of militia, di dictatorship militia infiltrated among the, the students and they were fighting against those left-oriented students in a very violent way and it ended in a, in a battle. And I, I attended this university so I heard about this story a lot and that was since I was in the university reading about that and I knew some professors that were there and for me it was a perfect tale about resistance, a perfect tale about those two sides of history. But in the beginning I started writing it in 2010, so it's a long, long way to make the film. And at that point Dilma was our president. Dilma was a militant against the dictatorship when she was uh, 19 and she was in prison, she was tortured and 30 years after that she became our president. So when I started writing it I was kind of celebrating this journey like wow she was uh, she was in the resistance and now she's our president. But four years after that, she suffered a coup in Brazil and then we started this nightmare. So I understood that we will never win. It, it's a circle. We, we have to, to stand for it, doesn't matter what. And uh, I, I mean, the film is about the past and the future, probably. We, we, can, we think that rights we have 
uh, are a guarantee, but it's not. We have to keep on fighting for keep the rights. They are not a guarantee, never. Uh, thank you so much. Are there already questions? Oh, yes, please. Uh, do we have a mic? Yeah, just a second, and the mic comes. Hello. Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah. My name is Sejal. Uh, welcome to you, India, uh, all of you. And I heard that I explore your story, your films have uh, ins own inspiring stories. So what was your inspire to come into this field? Your inspiration to come into this film? What inspired you to come into this film? Who wants what to... What inspired you to come into this field? You, four of can answer this. Yeah, who wishes to try and answer? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I, so, f uh, as I said, I, I, I was um, undocumented for, for some time in, in the, the United States. And um, at one point, I thought of this prompt, this uh, artistic uh, question for myself. Uh, how does an uh, undocumented documentary filmmaker document themselves um, I had this idea that perhaps like through that investigation if there was a resolution then it could lift this curse of bureaucracy that there would be some way of um, of documenting the self in a in a both artistic but also like legal legal sense um, so, I, I went about doing that, like um, how to document the self, and and that's it's complicated because it 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 um, it's, thinks about document in in many forms. It's the the living document, the film document, um, the bureaucratic document, and um, and I think like. Uh, with with my films, it's, it's been trying different forms of of um, self documentation, um, with the idea that that perhaps something can change. Um, and and throughout this process, I'm not sure if 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 anything has really been resolved, but but there has been a sort of internal resolution. Um, Whereas the the bureaucratic process was never resolved in the United States for for my family, at least for me it was it, through filmmaking came to terms of um, needing my own agency, um, of deciding to leave and living um, with in in exile from 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 where I grew up, as as a as a stance of 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 um of creating my own agency in the world um so in the in the initial inspiration was was sort of that just how to understanding the situation in order to maybe resolve it and then but but that process has led to kind of a a wider i don't know uh, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there in a, in the middle of a of a sentence. <laughs> oh, thank you. Unfortunately, I have to go because I have my screening. Okay. So. Well, we wish you a wonderful screening and hope to thank find you. you again here in uh, the festival. But uh, I, and of course, we wish you a wonderful Q and A because the wonderful audiences of Mumbai will yes. certainly react warmly to your film. Thank That's you, Vera, true. for being with thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, so, Asmae Patipan, do you also wish to say something in answer to this question? Yeah, what inspired me in cinema in general, just first, because I watched a lot of films. For example, I grew up in Morocco watching Indian films. 
Yeah, uh, and still now, until now in Morocco, we have, uh, I mean, cinemas goes more with Indian films than Moroccan ones. So I remember all films are Shahrukh Khan and Kajol, and it was a commercial, but we, like, we love this film. So yeah, it's cinema, uh, watching films. When I grew up and I wanted a Lafemi school in Paris, and then I discovered a lot of kind of cinema, like Iranian cinema that I love very well. And lots of directors from the world just inspired me to tell stories. This is the necessary necessity, just to tell stories. But when it comes about own story, intimate one, it was very hard. I took a lot of time because um, it's not easy to to make film with someone that you live with, your parents, your grandmother. Um, I mean, yeah, it took from me a lot of time to convince them. So I think this, um, this I mean, this necessity to tell, to, to how I can tell a story in my way, this was what, what inspired me to come to the, to the film. And then I discovered that in my family, there are three generations. One generation never talk, and the second generation of my parents, that's just like silent. So I am the generation that can talk, that can tell things. So the way that I find it for me easy, I can, as um, Vera said, I cannot make music, I cannot m uh, write books. So the way that I, I really, uh, my skills was in cinema. So I will use a light and write stories with my camera. And that's, that's why I was very inspired to tell my own story f first and to look for this own secret you know, and just like discover um, why we hide things in, in family. Maybe um, when, I will, when I will discover why we hide, we hide things in my own home, it will be easy to tell other stories in the society later. Yeah. Can I chip in on one thing? I think one of the things that I like the most uh, about Asma's film uh, is exactly that within your film, you're actually claiming this voice. You you want to 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 stress the fact that uh, through cinema you want to tell this story, but there's also the fact that you're doing this as a woman, and I'm wondering how how much this aspect of being a young woman filmmaker was important for your fight to claim mm. that voice. Yeah, thank you for the question. That's why I couldn't make this film seven years ago i was growing up with my project because it it wasn't easy to make to make this film before because um, as you say it's hard as a woman to present herself first that i am filmmaker for us in for example in morocco we have a lot more men filmmakers that than women so just it was first for me to improve myself and to say i can tell stories i am filmmaker then i come back to make this film so I think i mean today women or men it's hard to make films it's for both i mean for both because the industry is I'm, I am talking about the professional way how we make films and how you bring it to the international level and how you finish. I mean, if I can, we can shoot all everything, but the post production also takes a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of. So, as a woman, it, you face a lot of pressure. Really, really, very, very b bad pressure. I'm exhausted today, really, with all these great things that I did. I feel exhausted. I cannot enjoy everything. But the result, when I just watched pictures from Cannes to now, I saw that I am very happy. And today I'm talking about my film in India. I never dreamed to be here as a Moroccan woman. So I think things are changing now and thanks to to our um, energy because uh, we should never give up. This is the, I mean, yeah. I, I could stop a lot of time in my in my way because it was very, very hard. Like, why I am making that? Why? Finally, you, we ask ourselves, we just watched the mirror and we said, why? No, but when, you, when I just came to bed, I said, yes, I have a reason. I should tell the story to these people just hiding um, somewhere in the streets. I'm talking about my subject, uh, um, about this bread riot. 
there are people like needing this me to tell their them stories. So this was maybe the reason. That's why intimate stories was helping me to fight and to make this film until the end and not giving up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Patipan, do you wish to add something? Uh, yeah, for inspiration, uh, I told you about the, 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 the sea wall. That is the background of the film. But the story, my, my story is about two girls yeah, who, who fight against something bigger than themselves. Uh, it's really personal story for me because uh, I'm, I'm, I was raised up by my grandmother. And for, for me, I raise up and I have like more femininity in myself, more than uh, like, like when, when, when I was very young, uh, a guy like to, to define like uh, this is like the male character. It will be like something very masculinity, easy to angry and like in, in the stereotype of like uh, the guy should be like that. And I'm not like that. <laughs> So, and everyone in, in my family or everyone that I know who is a guy is something like that. So it's like I, I was raised up to be a girl, <laughs> something like that. And yeah, that, that's why I, I, I have a, a lot of friends who is a girl more than a guy and yeah, something like that. And I'm making a film that I have two main characters is a girl. And it's really hard for me to like, it's my said that as you are a, a girl to make a film and it's hard, difficult than to be a guy, right? But I'm a guy who make a film about a girl. It's really hard to pitch. Everyone will ask me like, oh, you're a guy, you cannot make this film. Or, uh, and, and my film is about a Muslim girl that I'm, I'm, I'm not Muslim. And so, okay, you're a guy and you're not Muslim. You cannot make this film. And my, my film is like also like the treatment, like, like you guys and I have they also developed it for seven years and the same too. And it's like the, the thing that I want to prove also like about the stereotyping things like uh, uh, because I really want to, to fight for something like this, the equality things. So uh, and the voice for someone that is smaller and cannot fight with something bigger, the bigger structure like that, uh, whatever, whatever it is. So I have discussion with my team from the beginning. Like I will respect every voice in my team, even like in the filmmaking, in filmmaking team way like that. Uh, my 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 film include like many art forms, like the real art, like conceptual art, music, and many thinkings, and we spend a lot of time to develop. And I'm really uh, the, my direction is not only the the script that I want to be, it to be that way, but my direction is to respect every voice in my crew, in my team. So I listen to the artists who making the art in my film. And I bring it back to develop my script. I listen to editor, I listen to my DP, and I change. So my, 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 my film is really flexible, the script. And I will make sure that every voice of my team uh, will be heard. I will not dominate or like, uh, it's not be like that, but I, 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 I talk in very deep way about the concept. And this is what they're thinking. So my, in my team, like we have many uh, gender. I, I, I know that I, I born like more femininity, but but my biological gender is still male. So I I, I involve many uh, in my team like many races and gender, and I so have so have many advisor who can help me read the script. That many gender to try to balance everything together. So I, I remember when, when I uh, got in in Busan and I won an award and the speech that I, I, I tell that this is not only uh, me that, that, that got that, but it's for everyone. And I, I really uh, feeling like that way for sure, because it's really their input and they respect me to balance it, everything together. Yeah, so, so that is what I want to prove to. Yeah. Thank you so much. Other, other questions from? The, oh yes, please. The mic. One second. Uh, the mic is coming. What's something you hope to take back from your trip to India? Uh, 
whether in relation to the discourse on your film or just as people. How how long are each of you staying here for? Yeah. Yeah. What and what are you taking back from yeah, this journey? Yeah. What have you taken back? Yeah. What do you hope yeah. to take back? Why are mm. you here? Like apart from, of course, the recognition that Mami is going to give your film. Apart from that. About the city, how much we will stay? India. Uh, for me, um, um, for me, it's, it's like just in the festival, I will go by the third, but I feel myself just uh, like discovering a lot of things in three days. Today, I, w I went in the morning in Gateway, India, and it was for me a really very nice thing to, to, to say this new ar ar architecture that I used to watch in the picture. I was impressed by seeing things seeing India in the real because India is very famous in our culture as a Moroccan. So it's like for me, I am discovering um, a children dream, you know. So I am walking in that street and everything impressed me because for me, these things was only um, um, things that I can watch in series and films. And now it's real. I can touch the sari, I can touch the things there with my hands. So I am discovering India like, not like a tourist, but like someone with a, with a child eye. And it's different. I like colors. I like everything. I'm passing in the, in the small street and I want to go through the, the, the very secret things in India because I think India as a, as a country is, a, is um, the country that everyone wants to visit in the world. Just, I'm not, I'm not uh, exa exaggerating, but it's, it's the real point from someone who come from Morocco, me, from Africa, yeah. Uh, for me, it's my first time here in India, in Mumbai, and because like uh, what what I'm interested in 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 filmmaking or in do any kind of art artwork is about diversity and equality as I I told you, and uh, today before coming here to press conference I I wake up uh, early have breakfast, and I spend time two hour to walk around the city before coming back to the hotel and, and attend this uh, press conference. So I want to. Uh, how to say to experience life in India and also like how different of people in the other uh, different area by the beach in the city and I just walk around and observe everything that uh, I think it's really good experience for me and I, because I really like about uh, diversity and uh, to explore something like this so in some way I mean it will be a good material for me to to develop in maybe next film or something. I, I'm developing my next film right now, and maybe I got something that uh, inspired me in some part, <laughs> something like that. Uh, yes, uh, I'm very excited to be here, and it's my first time. Um, I, I live in Mexico. I grew, I'm from the Philippines, and. Um, and I was just in Japan right before this, so then I feel it's like completely a bit like thrown out of many different contexts. Um, and um, but I'm I'm just really curious. Like um, I, I don't I don't know much about about India, but I'm curious to to explore like the have conversations and, and discover the the film culture here. And um, just a broader cultural sense, and I'm curious to have conversations with 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 you all. Um, and um, I'm curious to to eat good and discover sights. And um, and um, I'm really interested in in um, like taking back some some vinyl records, like some Bollywood records, maybe. Um, and when I when I was in Japan, I had discovered kind of like like the uh, kind of the cheesy records that no one buys. They're called like enkas, which is kind of just sad sad music um, that that they play in, in in bars sometimes, or or like they sing in karaoke. Um, and then it was this like the the cheapest records there. And then and I started to build a little con um, collection in in this past trip. And then so I was. I'm interested in kind of continuing 
like digging through through music a little bit and um, discovering some some places to do that. So if anyone has some recommendations of of of, of uh, any pl any places, I'm I'm very open to everything. So yes, I hope that someone maybe here in the room or here at the festival will be able uh, to give you the right <laughs> advice to find some fantastic vinyls here in uh, Mumbai. Uh, is there any other question from the floor, from the audience? I, otherwise, I just wanted to maybe wrap it up with something that is somehow connected to this. Um, how has it been so far in terms of your I mean, I guess some of you, how people around the world have been responding to the film. So I wanted to ask you, how has it been so far? And maybe for those of you who had that experience uh, as well, since your films are also so specifically connected to identities within your own countries, if they have been screened back home and how they were received there. So whoever wants to start, please. Uh, I think um, we make films for meeting the audience as a filmmaker. It's this, it's really special this moment when we finish um, our first or our final um, uh, version and uh, it comes out from the um, editing timeline to go to discover the audience. It's such a great and pressure we have. This, I mean, for me it was Mm, the journey was very long from Cannes Film Festival. Um, the, the, the audience changed from country to other country. And Cannes Film Festival was very different to Toronto, for example, and was very different for, from Carlo Vivari. And um, maybe in Athens was different. So we, we, I discovered a very, um, lot of kind of, uh, of audience when changing countries. And this is really important. Um, um, for example, in Germany, it was um, not, not uh, Toronto. Toronto, for example, the audience uh, can just uh, re react immediately with the film but for example in germany we react after in the so it's 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 really nice when you have this maybe same question um, that you receive in toronto and you can receive also in germany it was my my case one question that i I receive in all of these countries about my grandmother. People ask a lot of questions about this. I mean, this relationship. And I think the, there are things that uh, are similar in in uh, when we are meeting our audience. And each time we have some mm, some some questions and some things. Uh, may, may, mm, sometimes my audience give me a lot of ideas. Even in my future films, not only in in this first time, and this is good. This ping pong, you are not playing um, alone when only with you, or your editor, and your editing room, but you are playing with all these those people that they can give you an ideas about this project and the other ones. Yeah, I think um, for me the journey was was long, but it's very exciting because each time I am. I am meeting. I I meet young people also who come. For example, in cinema, the three days ago, um, I meet students that they come twice to watch my film. They said this is the this is the second time we are we are coming to watch, and I'm so happy when I am touching the the uh, the all. Um, I mean, age uh, tous les les âges. Yeah, yeah. This is so important. I'm not talking only about one category of audience but all the audience can ask questions and this is a, a very a, a very hard a question to have in films i think yeah uh i i like to think that my films aren't really finished um and then there's there still have holes they're still open and um there was there was a moment where i feel like i was finishing this film and then backtrack to leave it a little open again because the phase that that it meets the audience is very generative for me uh for my practice and um it's interesting the it is 
it's a part of the filmmaking also like the audience adds their own experience to to my experience the film experience and that becomes like a, a v immensely profound and valuable uh, feedback into the filmmaking process um, that we get to sit in this room and collectively um, find new meaning together and um, like I find sometimes encountering audiences and encountering questions that are just so deep and so profound like it blows my mind and it's more like the question is is better than the film maybe <laughs> um and then so i like i'm always surprised with, with with audiences and and the stories the individual stories that i get from the audiences and then that encounter in itself like each audience member that's that that brings honesty to a question and curiosity and their own exploration it's a um, they are our filmmakers too and they're collaborating um in in this film please uh for me uh that for, uh, maybe it's personal i mean i'm not sure but for for me uh to making this film uh and uh, to won any award for me is like a bonus but uh what is really a gift for me is when it reached to the audience the audience watch the film and in every uh when when i experienced like screening also in here uh two days two days ago yeah maybe my film is not for everyone and i i know that like after finishing the film maybe 10 to 20 percent of the audience uh they, they come to me and what is really impressed and that about it i i think it's really a gift for me is when they say thank you to me to making this film because maybe because it is what i trying to do to be a voice for someone that cannot say anything in the situation that they are in and when when they come to me and say thank you to making this film i'm in that situation or uh they have don't have any film that uh, can tell my feeling like this before or something like that it's really important for me to uh, for a long journey and what i try to prove or try to be a voice for someone and if if they really think or feel that uh, this film that worked in that way for for them that is really a gift for me and uh, with this uh, nice uh, generous note about uh, uh, the gift that the audience gives to filmmakers we have to wrap it up because our time is over i would like to thank all the filmmakers who participated to the press conference and the members of the press who have attended thank you so much